Now let's look at a little more challenging problem algebraically. We're going to find the inverse of f of x equals 2x minus 3 over x plus 1. So we realized in the last example that the first thing we should do is we should swap x and y, regardless of whether it's a numeric example, a graphical example, or an algebraic example. So remember, this is really your y. So in place of y, I'm going to put x. And in place of x, I'm going to put y. But I happen to have two x's. So my goal is to get these two copies of y together and by themselves, so that I end up with y equals and everything else on the other side. And when I do that, I will end up with the inverse. So the first thing I need to do is get rid of the variables in the bottom. So I'm going to multiply both sides by y plus 1. Now when I look at this, I mean look, this side cancels. Oops, that's a minus. But when I look back at this side, I have to decide whether I'm going to distribute my x. And because I'm going to have more than one copy of y and I need to get them near each other, then I do need to distribute. That way I have individual terms. So I have an xy plus a 1x. So I have, let me rewrite it so it looks a little easier to read. I see I have four terms all together, and two of them have y's in them. So when you have more than one term with the variable that you want, you want to put those near each other and move everybody else away. So it doesn't matter which side, I'll just pick this side. So I'll keep my y over here. Okay. So this x doesn't have one, so I'll move it over there. And then I'm just moving across, so my 2y, I want it back on this side. And then I'll keep my negative 3. So again, let's look at that. My xy stayed where it was. This x moved to the other side. This 2y came over here to this side, and then this negative 3 stayed. Because again, my goal was to rearrange it so that I have all my y's on one side and everybody that doesn't have a y on the other side. So now I will factor out the y, get an x minus 2 here, equals negative x minus 3. And then the last step is to divide by x minus 2. So y is negative x minus 3 all over x minus 2. So this is my inverse.